Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 14th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Apple today updated pretty much everything in Apple's portfolio. We got updates for Safari, iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, and watchOS. The trigger for this particular set of updates appears to be a critical vulnerability in WebKit that is already being exploited and that may lead to remote code execution if a user visits a malicious web page. This particular vulnerability, CVE 2023-23529, affects at least Safari, iPad, iOS, as well as macOS. Interestingly, there has been no security content published yet for tvOS and watchOS. Not sure why that was delayed. Usually it's only delayed if uh, there are still some other operating systems uh, that haven't been patched yet, but with everything being patched, not really clear what was special here about tvOS and watchOS. In addition to this already exploited vulnerability, we also have a vulnerability that affects iPadOS, iOS, and macOS, CVE 2023-23514. Now, this is more sort of a privilege escalation sandbox uh, escape vulnerability and could potentially be chained here with the first vulnerability in order to get then full kernel level access to the device. And then the third vulnerability, less severe, it's a Mac OS issue and uh, it only affects uh, shortcuts and may uh, lead to an app uh, being able to observe some protected user uh, data. That's CVE 2023-23522. So recommendation here is update, update relatively quickly because this is already being exploited. However, uh, no details have been made available as far as I'm aware regarding this uh, one already being exploited of vulnerability. But who needs fancy Saturdays in Safari if you can just use simple phishing tricks using some old weaknesses in existing websites. We got a submission of a Venmo a fish by Charles. And what's sort of a little bit special and different about this fish is that the link is going well to LinkedIn using a feature that has been problematic for a few years now. And that's S-Links. Uh, it's typically used uh, by LinkedIn business users and allows you to link uh, to arbitrary websites. Well, it's sort of used kind of like a short link uh, here, but uh, the main purpose is not to shorten the link. It's not really all that terribly short, but uh, to obfuscate it by linking to a well-known trusted website, LinkedIn, and then the user is immediately being redirected to a compromised WordPress site, which then does another redirect to the Venmo phishing page. The phishing page, well, uh, nothing really all that terribly special, steals your Venmo username and password, but also uh, does steal a uh, credit card data and bank information if you are uh, entering it into the phishing website. We do see actually a number of different sort of phishing going on lately with Menmo, also smishing like where SMS messages are being used uh, for it. There may be something going on here also uh, because Venmo does a fairly simple uh, second factor, just a simple SMS four-digit code here. Not sure if that's uh, somehow uh, making it easier than to take advantage of uh, the fished information here from Venmo, but not uh, too familiar uh, with Venmo to really experiment with that very much. I did notify uh, LinkedIn about uh, the malicious S-Link and uh, well, uh, as I'm recording this, it has already been disabled. 
Yesterday, I mentioned a couple of malicious Python packages, and I mentioned how we haven't had them in a while. At least I didn't mention them. Well, uh, today we have more. Uh, Phylum discovered over 451 unique packages. They all follow sort of the same pattern in that they try to impersonate well-known packages by omitting a letter. So simple typo squatting. If you install these packages, you also get as an additional payload uh, browser extension installed that chrome browser extension will uh, then monitor your clipboard for crypto coin addresses and replace the addresses with the attacker's address and the hope here of course is that the crypto coins will be transferred into the attacker's wallet to obfuscate the nature of the malicious code, they also uh, use uh, strings of Chinese uh, characters in order uh, to make analysis and simple pattern matching a little bit more uh, difficult. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Hope everybody's ready for Patch Tuesday and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.